All right, today is going to be a very medically relevant problem. So I actually came across this when I was reading um, Atul Gawande's book, and I decided to make a problem of it because I think it's an awesome problem. So this question says, there is a heart defect that affects children called transposition of great arteries. It's an actual defect. In this defect, the aorta emerges from the right ventricle of the heart, and the artery to the lungs emerges from the left ventricle. As a result, blood coming into the heart is often sent directly back to the body instead of first going to the lungs where it can be oxygenated. This defect is often fatal if it is not immediately fixed. Surgeons often treated this condition by putting in a shunt within the heart. Based on the information above, between what two regions of the heart would it be most practical to place the shunt? Very, very applicable question and something that I am very, very um, excited to get to. Uh, but first of all, I want to approach, I want to tell you the approach. The way we're going to approach this um, is first, I'm going to take you through the normal physiology. So I'm going to show you the actual normal flow of the heart. And then, and then I'm going to discuss the pathophysiology, and I'm going to talk about how it's different in this specific example. And then that will actually give us our answer. So this is often what you want to do if you come across a question like this and you have no idea. You want to discuss, okay, what part of normal heart flow do I know? You know, if you can discuss the normal heart flow, then you can move on to what's wrong in this example and then eventually get to the answer. And you'll see how that works in this, play, in this example. So first of all, let's go straight to the um, normal flow of heart. So the normal flow of the heart is, let me show you how I draw hearts, by the way. It's very, very great. Yeah, this is my heart, believe it or not. I just separated it up into four quadrants. Um, and I'm going to abbreviate things. So this is the right ventricle. Um, this is the, wait one second. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. This is the right ventricle. This is the right atrium. Um, this is the left atrium. And this is the left ventricle. Okay, so the normal flow of heart, there are two main flows. And in this example, the reason why I started using the green is because I'm going to draw red blood as oxygenated um, and blue blood as non-oxygenated. So just remember, red is oxygenated and blue is not oxygenated. So let me erase this and... This is O2. So remember, um, oxygenated blood is usually removed from the left ventricle through this thing called the aorta. And then it goes to um, the body. And the body takes that oxygenated blood and is like, thank you very much, but I need all this oxygen. So then it spits out deoxygenated blood, which then ends up going to the right atrium. And you'll see right away what I did is, uh, in this example, uh, blue is going to represent no O2 in the blood. Okay, Great. So now that that's that, the blue deoxygenated blood will then make its way through the right, right atrium into the right ventricles. And the right ventricle will say, huh, it looks like you need to be oxygenated. So it sends it off to the lungs. But the, the blood vessel through which it does that is called the pulmonary artery. This is normal, remember. This is, we're not talking about the disease state yet. The lungs, as you know, when you inhale, all right, just took up a bunch of oxygen. So now when you take up a bunch of oxygen, the lungs actually can oxygenate the um, blood, and now it becomes oxygenated and makes, it, makes its way back to the left atrium. Left atrium then pumps to the left ventricle, and you get this cycle. This is the normal flow of blood. Um, and so, ooh, why did I get that dirty? And so this left side of the circuit that you're seeing, this left side that's going to the lungs, that's called the pulmonary circuit. Okay. Um, and this right side that you're seeing, um, oh, well, I guess I'll just make that side blue, although it doesn't have anything to do with the color. This right side is called the systemic. Ooh. Circuit. Okay? So I just want you to see that this is what's normally happening in the heart. 
But now we can actually go ahead and try to see what's happening in this example. This example is totally different, and it's important for, to, uh, for us to understand what's happening in this dizzy state, which is just transposition of great arteries. So I'm going to draw our heart again. I'm okay with this. Um, okay. So remember, we have our four chambers in the heart. We have a right ventricle, um, right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle. OK, but in the transposition of the great arteries, what's going on is that we actually have the aorta coming out of the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery coming out of the left ventricle. So this is going to change things, first of all, because remember, the, um, the blood going into the right atrium is always deoxygenated because it's coming from the body, okay? But in this case, in this case, because we have the aorta right here, aorta, because the aorta is attached to the right ventricles, the aorta will in inherently... Oh God, why is that so disgusting? The aorta will inherently send the blood to the body. And that body will just bring it straight back to the right atrium. And so now you never get oxygenated blood going to the body because all you're suing is because the aorta is there, it's gonna send it off to the body, the body will bring it back to the right atrium and it never gets a chance to go to the lungs. On the other hand, remember in this disease, the pulmonary artery pulmonary artery is right here, okay? Um, sorry, I can't write the whole thing out. And that is going to obviously send things to the lungs, right? And so it's going to go to the lungs. It'll get oxygenated, but guess what? It just ends up back at the left atrium, and it'll basically keep going through this cycle. So you'll see that in this disease, you get this independent two-cyclic state where the right side of the heart is consistently flowing deoxygenated blood and the left side is consistently flowing oxygenated blood but they never get a chance to interact so your body never really gets um, oxygen which is bad um, so that's why oftentimes if kids are diagnosed with this they don't live very long you can only live with this while you're in the womb because you're not breathing on your own at that point but the moment you're born and you have to start using your lungs the lungs as you can see won't be very useful for you because they don't actually help give your body oxygenated blood so, surgeons are smart though. Surgeons came up with a way to address this. And you too will figure out how to address this. Because if we look at this current diagram, the main problem is figuring out a way to get, figuring out a way, let me use a different color, figuring out a way to get this oxygenated blood, right? We wanna figure out a way to get that into this system. Because this is the oxygenated blood that we want to eventually get out and back around to the body because the body needs oxygen okay the body needs oxygen and so if we can figure out a way to get the blood from this left side circuit into the right side we could make it work and as you're probably seeing already the best way to do this the best way to do this in our new system would be to create a shunt from the left atrium to the um, right atrium. So remember, this is the left atrium. This is the right atrium. And again, remember, this is all anatomical. So you're assuming this is your own heart. So you have to pretend you're in the page. That's why it might seem reverse to you. But don't worry, I know what I'm doing. And so remember, in our, in our, in our example, we go into the lungs. But now with this shunt, you're actually allowing blood to flow into the right atrium so it can get oxygenated. And that right atrium will flow that blood right up to the right ventricle. All right, I didn't label everything because I got lazy, but let me make sure you understand. Oh wait, that's not right. Let me make sure you understand that. Wait, and now this oxygenated blood can actually make its way all the way around because remember, this is the aorta in our diseased state, and this is the pulmonary artery in our diseased state. Come on, draw the line. Okay. So, aorta will now send this oxygenated blood off to the body, 
And the body will say, okay, cool, oxygen is great, I love oxygen, but it'll use up that oxygen and send deoxygenated back, blood back, which can also go through the shunt. And now it'll make its way up to the left ventricle. And now you at least get some partial oxygenation. Yes, you do still have, you do still definitely have some, some of this deoxygenated blood going through the cycle as well. And ne so this is not nearly as efficient as having the normal flow, but you now at least have some sort of partial exchange of oxygen. And so in this case, the answer to this actual question was to, in, to design a shunt between the right and left atrium. Uh, and that would be the perfect way to, to, to address this disease. So if we go back to the answer, the answer to this question, um, go, uh, going full circle, is going to be A. Creating a shunt between the right atrium and left atrium will allow for exchange between the circuits, and that's the best way to treat this condition. I mean, there are other ways, but it, out of the answer choices given, A is the best one. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any more questions. Give it a big thumbs up uh, and subscribe. See ya.